Mal, one professor. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which is to say in the Paleo Hebrew, Yahweh, the name of the Heavenly Father, meaning He is, Bahashem, meaning in the name, Yahweh Shai, meaning He is our salvation. And that is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, a so called black man. The fear of Yahweh is to be revered. The fear of Yahweh is to be revered. And from the clip that I started off with, you can see how when things are going to get dire, how people are going to revert back to their animalistic behaviors where it's going to be every man for themselves. Now, yeah, that video was a, a few years ago. Once this whole thing, you know, officially kick-started back in 2020, there was a shortage of certain uh, household items, you know, such as toilet paper, you know, certain food products like rice in the UK and water, you know, over here in the US. And you can expect to have that same result times 100 once things really pick up this time around, this go around, when there's nothing to be found nowhere, you're going to have people breaking into other people's houses, you know, so things are going to really get chaotic on this on this go around you know and this is in the brinks of them just having that october the 4th you know nationwide alert system now we don't know for sure ex exactly how that's going to play into effect whether or not that's going to activate something in those people who took you know took the took the juice you know but if you start to see things pick up where things could be justifiable you know uh justifiable you know passed off as you know something that's uh, reoccurring or something that's happening that people can't put two and two together to figure out then you know the reason why so we just gonna have to sit back and watch and see how things play out moving forward but nevertheless you know the fear of Yahweh is to be revered and when you go into that word revered it means respected and uh, admired because he spoke of the things that are going, going to come to pass. You know, in 2 Ezra, the ninth chapter, it says, Measure thou the time diligently. And when thou see earthquakes and uproar in the people, then thou shalt know that this is the very same time that the Most High will begin to visit the world that he made. And you see in uptakes and uproars and earthquakes, you know, more frequently as we get in closer and closer to those growing pains, you know. And once Jacob's trouble, JT, is at his crescendo, his peak, you know, you can expect to see things that you have never seen before on the face of this earth. Like I said, there's going to be like a time that's never been seen before. So moving forward, you know, the fear of Yahweh is to be revered, man, because things are just going to pick up and get, and get more intense as we get closer and closer to those days. So this is Proverbs 9 and verse 8. And it reads, Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. So we're not going to sit here and continue to try to, you know, prove to a scorner that the Most High in his word is, you know, uh, valid or not. Because it's going to come a time where they're going to have to find out on their own. When the famine of the word hit, 
and they can't find an answer to what's going on and they be left in the dark looking like who's turned off the lights then they gonna be left to you know scramble for their own you know scramble for their own self and majority of those people are going go, are going to go down to Egypt for help and Esau Edom knows that so he has a solution already on hand for those people so it says verse 9 give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser so for those who are wise to the truth and that know exactly what time we're going into and can receive this knowledge, this truth, and this wisdom and do what, it, what they will with the, with the Spirit guiding them, then they're going to be wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. So those of us who are learning and who are gravitating to this truth, to this word, it says teach a just man and he will increase in learning. We can see how these prophecies are being stacked up and ready to be, you know, completed. So we just, you know, keeping our, uh, keeping our oil trim, you know, so we can be prepared for that time once it, you know, presents itself. Verse 10, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So the fear of not, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. So, you having a, a, a healthy dosage of fear of Yahweh is going to be the beginning of your wisdom that's going to allow you to know exactly what's going on. Because it says in Psalms what? Let's go there. 119 and verse and this is the alphabet that King David went through. Psalms 119 and 104. It says, Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Right, so if this if what you learning ain't lining up with the precepts, then you should hate every false way because it's gonna lead you nothing but into disaster, to destruction. Because these precepts are are what's uh put before us to give us you know a heads up to let us know what's going on that's why it says through my precepts it's like it that's why it says through thy precepts i get understanding therefore i hate every false way let's go to you know to find out what the precept is isaiah 28 verse 9 and it says whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So knowing the basics, you know, what you can and cannot eat, you know, how to interact amongst your brethren. You know, those things right there are gonna to lead to you having a better understanding of the more, you know, complicated stuff, the meat, knowing who salvation is for. Cause you can go to a Christian and they could try to slide in and tell you that, you know, the Gentiles who received salvation that Paul went to weren't the Gentiles, you know, of the Israelites. They were the Gentiles of the rest of the people. When we know through thy precepts that salvation is only for the Israelites. So you can see how that knowing these precepts is going to deliver you and help you have a better understanding of just what's going on overall. That's why I said we read through thy precepts I get understanding. That's why I hate every false way. So going back into Isaiah the 28th chapter on the precepts it says whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little see the Christians and other people are, are are quick to run and say you reading that out of context when you have to read the whole Bible in context it all it goes together all together cohesively from Genesis all the way into Revelation including the Apocrypha which the Roman Catholic Church tried to take out so you won't, so you won't know that when Paul's being sent to those Gentiles that are in those other uh, countries such as you know the Corinthians, uh, what else? The Romans. You have to understand the history of, you know, the, the apocryphy. Without that history, you can 
easily fall into the trap of these set up Christians by these organizations. So through thy precepts, I get understanding. That's why I, that's why I hate every false way. See, because the Christians can come up with a precept and put together their own package, and it can you know cause other people who aren't you know chosen part of that number, the elect, to error. You know. So it says, for precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So you have to read it in that magnitude. You have to read it sometimes line upon line. You have to read it exactly how it's read. Sometimes you have to piece together the puzzles, read a little bit here, and then go back and read a little bit there in that uh, particular incident, and then put the picture together. See, you have to be drawn by the Spirit in order to receive it. So it says, for, for with stammering lips, and another tongue will he speak to his will he speak to this people to whom he said this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing yet they would not hear but the word of Yahweh was unto them precept upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snare and taken. So the way that the precept can the way that the precepts here a little and there a little can gather the elect to the light, it can also deter those who aren't meant to receive it. So that's why people can't understand it sometimes because they're not chosen to receive it. So it's all being, you know, orchestrated by the most high. So the fear of Yahweh is to be revered. Because the times that we coming into, he isn't going to have any respect to person. No matter if you a day old or a hundred years old, he's not going to have respect to person for you. You know, everybody's here to live out their judgment in these last days. Now this is Psalms 19, verse 9. And it reads, the fear of Yahweh is clean. Enduring forever, the judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous altogether. So once these judgments, so once these judgments start to become, you know, closer and closer, and start to being handed out to those who they're supposed to be handed out to, you know, there is no, oh, why did he do this to this infant, or why did he do this to this older person? No, all his judgments are going to be true and righteous. They're going to be justifiable on why these people are getting uh, judged because when they had the time to seek him, they didn't seek him, you know, so now they have to deal with the judgment, you know and for you people out there who's saying, why would he you know hurt and kill little babies let's go there and read it this is Ezekiel 9 and let's go Verse 6. Well, let's go up to verse 4. And it says, And Yahweh said it to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the, upon the foreheads of the man that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare neither, have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they, then they begin at the ancient man, ancient man which were before the house. So you can see he isn't going to have any pity once he let these angels loose to you know come bring forth judgment upon this earth. Okay, now some might say, well, how, how can a baby be justified, you know, for destruction if he hasn't done anything wrong? But what you fail to realize is that spirit has been put back into a, has been fashioned and put into a body to be brought forth in this time for judgment. Because you, you don't know what that spirit done or did in a past life, you see? That's why Job says what? Job 4 in verse 
7. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perish being innocent. See? Whoever perish being innocent because you don't know exactly what that person did. You don't know if that person was innocent and they get just do, you know, they get they just do in this lifetime. Or you don't know if that person was, you know, guilty of doing something, you know, in that previous lifetime and now they being put back and, and fashioning the body to come back and receive uh, judgment this time around. So it says, remember, I pray thee, whoever perish, being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? Okay? So this is all about true and righteous, you know, judgment. Re going back into what we read in Psalms 19. The fear of Yahweh is clean. You know? Enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous all together. So whatever judgment is fitted for that individual is going to be true and righteous all together. If it's salvation, then that individual deserves to receive salvation. If it's death, you know, that individual deserves to receive death. You know, because it says the judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous all together. So that's why you see these astronomical numbers you know floods killing 20,000 peoples you know these are judgments that are true and righteous all together you know uh even if you want to say that Esau Edom the so-called white man was behind it well who who is orchestrating that you know Let's see if we can pull that up okay this is Psalm 17 Verse 13, and it reads, Arise, O Yahweh, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So Yahweh uses the wicked, which is Esau, Edom, pursuing the Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He uses them to execute his judgment as well, because that's, that's his sword. So even if you want to say that the so called white man used DEW, direct energy, Web, you can get the other word to you know bring forth those massive uh fires over there in hawaii and other parts of the world you know who who orchestrated that yahweh did so you see in all these things that's being brought forth on the earth for judgment that's true and righteous should wake you up to the fact that you need to get right and you need to have a healthy fear of your house so you be you know put put in put up put under that head so you don't get touched that's why it says in the hum let's go there the hum one and seven it says yahweh is good a stronghold in the day of trouble and he knoweth them that trusted him so you trusted in him you're going to be good in that day you know you're going to have a stronghold you're going to have a hedge of that protection but for you and for those who have, you know, no worry and don't fear your hour, then you're going to have judgment that's coming towards you. And it's going to be true and righteous altogether. There's going to be nothing that you can say that you didn't that you didn't deserve to have happen to you when it happens to you. Because now is no excuse that you don't have an idea of what's going on when the word is going out high power. So there's no excuse. Not only do you have the word that's going out on the highways and byways you have it over the internet as well so it's up to you and ultimately being part of that elect to be sealed to receive this knowledge because like we read some people are going to receive the precepts upon precepts and it's going to be you know it's going it's going to knock them backwards they're not going to be able to receive it. it's going to uh turn them off even more because they weren't with yahweh shot from the foundation okay so Yahweh Shah warned us himself, you know, he said when you see the abomination of desolation, speaking of 70 AD, but can still be uh, adopted in today's time, what did he say? Let's go there and get that account. St. Matthew 24. And let's pick up around 15. And it says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by daniel the prophet stand in the holy place whoso readeth let him understand now this incident took place in 70 a.d but 
like we read, there's no new thing under the sun. Sun. So we use this for our, you know, our times now, our learning times. Romans 15, 4. You know, what does this say? Let's go there. This is Romans 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So these things that were written before our time are for our what? Our learning. So when we see these things take place, we can have a better understanding and know how to move. Because Yahweh Shah, like we was reading, said in the 24th chapter of Matthew, the, tw uh, the 15th verse, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let him which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Because once JT, Jacob's trouble hit, man, you're going to have to be constantly on the, on the move, you know, from one town to the next. And if you have a child that's with suck, that's on the breast, you know, it's going to be quite challenging for you to move with that child because you're going to have to attend to that every, you know, that infant's every needs. So unless, unless the Most High be with you, you know, you're going to be set up for those true and righteous judgments altogether. So... It's best that you seek him now while he may be found and understand what's going on and repent and turn back from your ways, you know, and keep these law, statute, commandments, and judgments to the best of your ability along with the faith in the Hamashiach, Yahweh So when those days do present themselves, you will have a head to stronghold around you because, you know, we coming into some very perilous times and, and you want to be protected as well as possible. You know, and by doing so, staying in this truth is going, you know, staying in this truth is going to greatly increase your odds of having that hedge of protection around you. Okay? So the fear of Yahweh is to be revered. All right? So, you know, let's close out and we ain't going to make it too long. This is First Peter 5 and verse 8. And it reads, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So we need to be sober and be vigilant. And a good way of being sober and being vigilant is having a healthy dose of fear of Yahweh. Because the fear of Yahweh is to be revered. He is a stronghold. You know, he's going to keep us in those days that we need to be kept. You know, Revelation 3.10 says what? Let's go there. This is Yahweh Shah speaking, red letters. Revelation 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So when that hour of temptation come, he's going to keep those who kept his patience. You know, like it said in Isaiah 65. What? Let's go there and read that. Can never get too much of the truth. Isaiah 65. Verse 13, Therefore thus saith the Lord Almighty, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. So once that hour of temptation come and try the whole world, you know, his servants are going to be taken care of. They ain't going to have to capitulate and acquiesce to this beast system and bow down and take that mark to receive food and caring or whatever. No, they're going to be taken care of by the Most High. Yahweh Baal Hashem, Yahweh Shai. He's going to take care of them all the way. You know, he's going to lift up a standard. That standard is going to be taken care of. You know, medically, they're going to be looked out, looked out after. You know, physically, whether they need food or whatever, it's going to be provided for them. It's all going to be taken care of. So, back to 1 Peter 5 and 8. Where we was reading 
be sober, be vigilant. You know, this is the time that you're putting into work right now so you can have that stuff, you know, so you can have like money in the bank per se for when things really hit, you know, hit the fan. Now, I'm not talking about money in the bank as opposed to Esau Edom's money. I'm talking about treasures that you store up for the kingdom, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, how shot. So when things really hit the fan, you'll be, you'll be looked out, you'll be looked out after, okay? So be sober, be vigilant. You gotta do your due diligence, you know, watch, like Ezra said in 2nd Ezra 9, measure the time diligently. So be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk of about, and he's seeking ways how he can set up things to be, you know, perceived as just, you know, sheer coincidence that it just so happened to happen so that the mass will buy into it and believe it and won't have any kind of pushback for him or any resistance once he come out with whatever he comes out with. But ultimately, they gonna clamor for whatever it is that he comes out with because they gonna be, you know, in dire straits that they gonna take whatever that it is that he has, and we ultimately know what it what it is he's bringing out with, which is which is going to be that mark spoken of in Revelation 13th chapter, 16th verse on down to 18. So we know in Isaiah 31st chapter, the first verse where it says, "Woe to them that go down to Egypt." It's going to be a lot that go down to Egypt, speaking of America, and not just America, but this beast system. They're going to go down to Egypt and receive whatever assistance or aid that Egypt is offering to them to combat, you know, hyperinflation, you know, ailments that's that's going to be out and about throughout the world, you know, because they're not going to have faith in the Most High because they didn't seek Him while He may be found. So now they rely to, now they are left to rely on this B system. And that's why many of them are going to take, you know, that mark. And two thirds that take it here in America is going to be destroyed along with the rest of the heathen nations that's here in America as well. I'm speaking of the two-third Israelites. So that's why it's imperative that we be sober, you know, and be vigilant because our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk him about seeking whom he, whom he may devour. And trust and believe he's doing his research, you know, he's doing his research diligently to know exactly how he could come about something that's gonna seem like it just so happened to happen out of sheer coincidence. So he's coming with it, so we got to be prepared and stay in this truth to know exactly what's going to happen and have a one-up on him as well. And you're only going to get that through this truth here. And Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, shot. So with that being said, hopefully somebody was able to take something from this. And if it be the Lord's will, until the next time, stay strong, stay in the faith. We almost home. Shalom.